if members of the Senate of the United States feel that when you say a man has been against public accommodations, has been against school desegregation, has been against the right of Negroes to protest against wrongs, who is in favor of keeping them from voting, when any senator or the Senate as a whole would feel that that is not convincing evidence of his unfitness, then our country is in a nightmare period because it shows that the white people who are in positions of authority are totally insensitive to the problems and the indignities that are heaped upon the black Americans in this nation. <laughs> So tired of the press crepe hangers about the fact if you guys had had your way, Hainsworth and Carswell would both be on the bench. Is this the right wing liberal establishment press? <laughs> I don't care who I'm talking about. You all, all I read in the press is well, we don't have a chance. Well, I've well, heard yes, it twice yes, before and we won both times. Sure that we can. Time. I say that we yes. are in a better position today vis-a-vis -vis Rehnquist on his positions than we were at the comparable time when Mr. Mitchell and I stood out here after our Hainsworth and Carswell testimony. Well, how, again, as a practical matter, how do you count the votes that will gain the support of the moderates that helped you defeat uh, well, Carswell and Hainsworth? Well, may I comment on that? May I comment on that? I don't assume that Senator Fong, who comes from the state of Hawaii, who is himself a member of what might be called a minority group, or that uh, Senator Hart, or even Senator Cook, when he carefully thinks this entire proposition over. I can't believe those men aren't deeply troubled uh, by this testimony. And it does seem to me that the people of their states must be heard from now. The people of Kentucky have got to say whether they want on the Supreme Court a man who doesn't believe in equal <coughs> rights for everyone. This is the way the public sentiment influenced the result in the Carswell and Hainsworth nominations. Uh, we are speaking here in the Senate Judiciary Committee. Uh, we are not only presenting our case to the committee, we're presenting it to the people. And if the people react as they did in the Carswell and Hainsworth nominations, uh, this nomination will be defeated. Every time you sit down, Chair Eastland seems to walk out. Has that happened? Uh, <laughs> no, I, I uh, wouldn't be able to explain uh, his conduct. Well, it is true, however, that he has never appeared uh, at the same time with this uh, act of ours. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Senator, there was the implication this morning in the testimony by Mr. Uh, Mitchell and Mr. Rao, uh, that uh, Mr. Rehnquist would be at least as bad a justice as uh, Judge uh, Carswell would have been. Do you agree with that? Well, of course, I think they would have been better off saying that they're not satisfied with anybody until they fit their criteria rather than how they would judge an individual candidate with any other individual candidate. I think what we heard this morning, uh, rather than the testimony of any officials of the NAACP from Arizona, was hearsay evidence that had been given to Mr. Mitchell, who I have a great deal of respect for. Uh, Mr. Rao um, uh, raced ahead of himself. There was civil rights legislation in Arizona in 1965, not in 1964. Uh, I think uh, he's tried to make a decision for the Supreme Court in wiretapping by quoting from the uh, federal government's brief and the cases before the Supreme Court but hadn't been decided by the Supreme Court yet. So I think what we're really seeing is that uh, we're seeing the testimony of, of, of very strong advocates who I have a great deal of respect for, but in essence they're saying that unless they believe as I believe, we're really not going to be happy with them and we're not going to be satisfied with them on the court. Do you see you, uh, not sure. I think I would wait to see whether it could be proven. I might say to you that like having question. been in several elections when we were talking about having challengers in precincts, we have quite a number of precincts in the state of Kentucky that if we don't have Republican uh, challengers at those precincts, we're not going to get any votes at all in them. So I think we've jumped to conclusions as to what the job and what the responsibility of a challenger at a voting booth really is. As a matter of fact, there are many people that say that I saw the, I saw the uh, letter in front of me that was signed by someone, but it wasn't notarized, and I'm quite sure that anybody who's a member of the state legislature of the state of Arizona could easily come forward before the committee. This is what really bothers me. Uh, and with all due respect to Mr. Mitchell, who I have a great deal of respect for, I would feel much more comfortable if officials of the Arizona NAACP would come before this committee rather than the hearsay evidence that was submitted this morning. Will you invite them? 
uh, indicated uh, a notarized copy of uh, Senator Clovis Campbell's uh, statement, which I will bring to the afternoon session. I would also, and on the Senate of the United States. More than Carswell. As I said in my testimony, Mr. Rehnquist, well, I'll put it this way, you've got to go back to President Harding to find a person in absolute terms as conservative as Mr. Rehnquist, who's been appointed to the court. And if you look in relative terms, taking into account the nature of the times, Mr. Rehnquist is the most conservative or reactionary, if you want to use the word, nominee to the court in the 20th century. Do you think uh, in both the hands they should do it on civil rights grounds? I think they should also do it on Bill of Rights grounds, but there is an ethical question here. The ethical question is the honesty of his testimony. And I think I demonstrated in there that Mr. Rehnquist, far from being a candid, honest witness, was evasive and totally lacking in that type of candor that ought to be a, uh, the hallmark of a Supreme Court justice. There is some feeling that the liberals, having failed to come up with any specific damaging evidence against Mr. Rehnquist, are now concentrating simply on his conservative views as a tactical maneuver. May I comment? <laughs> For all I know, it may be in the case of the communist Russia. But so far as I know, in the United States, we've always believed that people on the Supreme Court ought to be colorblind, and in Mr. Rehnquist's case, he not only isn't colorblind, but he's got a microscope available for the purpose of finding out how to deprive people of their human rights. Yeah, I want to steal a rights and to steal a few dollars. Well, or Hainsworth, when you fellas were saying you haven't got a... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you think we got enough there? Reaction. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. Rightist. <laughs> <laughs> Rest great. Uh,